Throughout this series of videos, I have emphasized how quick and easy pivot tables are to create and manipulate. I haven't mentioned that there can be speed or size issues, but if your data sources are extremely large, pivot table manipulations can be slow, and the size of your Excel files can be large. In this video, I will discuss some ways you can deal with these speed and size issues. The data set used here for illustration is a list of publicly traded companies. There are over 2,600 companies, and the list of fields extends out to column W. This is a fairly large data set, but it's still not nearly as large as many corporate data sets where pivot tables are used. Therefore, speed and size aren't really an issue here, but I will still illustrate some useful methods. I have already created a blank pivot table. You have probably noticed the Defer Layout Update option at the bottom of the Pivot Table Fields pane. When you perform typical pivot table manipulations, like dragging fields to various areas, filtering, and sorting, each operation can take a while if the data source is really large, and you can be left waiting for each operation to finish. However, if you check the Defer Layout Update option, nothing will happen until you click the Update button. Here's an example. I will drag fields around, but nothing will happen in the pivot table. By the way, note the total revenue is summarized by count by default because it has some blank entries in its column. Therefore, Excel treats it as a non-numeric field. I can't even change this to sum, at least not yet. Now I will click the Update button to populate the pivot table. Unfortunately, many operations are disallowed when the Defer Layout Update option is checked. For example, I can't change the Summarize By option to Sum because it is disabled. In the same way, I can't change the number format. To perform these operations, I need to uncheck the Defer option. So the defer option can speed up pivot table manipulations, but you need to be aware of this limitation. I will now turn to size issues. Suppose you have created a beautiful pivot table report and you want to distribute it to your colleagues. The current workbook is considerably larger than it needs to be because it contains the original data and it contains the pivot cache, a snapshot of the data that's the basis for the pivot table so you might not want to distribute such a large workbook. Here are two options you might consider. First, you can distribute a copy of the pivot table. I will select the entire pivot table and press Ctrl-C to copy. Then I will open a new workbook and use a Paste as Values option. This shows the numbers, but there is no pivot table functionality in the copy. You can decide whether this suffices for your colleagues. By the way, if you have a pivot chart, you can also copy it and paste it as a picture to the new workbook. Back to the pivot table workbook, I will show a second option that will probably surprise you. It cuts down on size, but it retains pivot table functionality. The surprise is that once the pivot table is created, its source is the pivot cache, not the original data. So you can delete the data sheet altogether and the pivot table still works fine. You might object that this is not a good option if you or your colleagues need the original data. After all, it is now gone. But it isn't really gone. Remember that you can double-click any number in the pivot table to open a new worksheet with all of the data used to produce this number. In particular, you can double-click the bottom right grand total to see all of the original data, which is recovered from the pivot cache. 
This would allow you or your colleagues to restore the original data and then possibly make some changes. In summary, you can probably ignore the tips in this video until you run into a pivot table that slows to a crawl or balloons in size. Then these tips can come in very handy.